Hello fellow citizens, welcome back to my video. This is going to be the updated version of my old best settings to use 3.23. And let's get right into it. So first of all, we don't need to log into the game. We just do it via the options here in the main menu. I'm going to start with game settings. So I'm just going to give you a rundown with quick explanation of what to use and why. So we disable vibration and camera spring movement. This basically makes your ship just more immersive, a little bit more floaty in game, etc. Which is not really needed uh, as it gives you vibrations in cockpit and, and sound um, when you get hit by missiles, etc. Um, disable show hints. It's a little bit uh, less clutter in your HUD. That's it really mu uh, pretty much here. Sprint toggle, I turn this off. Aim down science toggle, I turn it on. That's nice for first person shooters. Lean toggle is also off, so I have more control over it. And then here's the first settings we want to change. So star map zoom speed is personal preference, but I like to scroll a little bit faster here. And then fly G safe disable when boosting, yes. Because mm. I want to have my most acceleration when I boost. There is a missing setting now, which was disable G safe without the boosting. This is in the keybinds now, which I will tell you about in the keys, uh, keybind settings video. Uh, flight speed limiter defaults on, yes. Um, you can turn this off, but I like to have it on just to have more granul granularity while flying. Proximity assist default on is no, because we don't want to have this. It's going to slow us down when we close get closer to objects, which is not really needed. It still gives you an alarm. Space break engages boost, no, because I want to manage my boost by myself. Scroll a little bit down again, and we come over to pilot, V join, mouse, dead zone. Put this down to two. This is basically how much you need to remove the mouse from center until your ship is going to register an input. Four is quite big and makes micro adjustments really hard, so I put it to two. Velocity indicator to always on from fading because I always want to see in which direction my ship is heading and not have a fade when it's like somewhere in the middle of my screen. Because it could mean that I'm moving this this way, but I'm looking this way. Um, it could mean I crash into something that is over here on the left side. Anyway, uh, we do the mouse dead zone on turrets, the same as on pilot. So you have repetitions, makes the same uh, sensitivity, across the board, which is nice. Driver is fine like this, but you can obviously uh, tweak around with this as well. Then scroll down a little bit, and then all these settings here are completely default. I don't change them until we reach the look aheads. And here on vehicles targeting, enable auto zoom on lock target, I disable it because I don't want to have my camera zoom in on things that I lock. It's quite annoying. It also makes your static. The whole idea about static cockpit is that you have the same ranges, the same point of view all the time, every fight, the same, so you get more repetitions in. Um, same with look ahead. It's going to follow that lock target, and this makes your head go off center in the cockpit, makes the HUD harder to read, makes the crosshair not be on target as accurate, etc. etc. So I like to disable this. So I put both both to no. I don't know. That seems to be a bug that there is two. And every slider to zero, just in case uh it's get bugged out and it disa enables it again without showing here yes. So this is like some sort of redundancy in my case here. I do the same for the turrets. And I do the same for the driver. And after the drivers, we have the G-Force induced head movement, induced head bob, induced afterburner zoom. And these I also put to zero. 
um, that basically they are moving your head while you are engaging a target. When you're boosting, it's moving your head backwards. If you uh, fly a really hard U-turn to the left side, it's going to move your head really hard to the right side. Uh, it's, it's just not really good. I like to have my head static in front of my HUD and look at my crosshair in a straight line to engage an enemy. Global camera shake is the same as the second and third option on the top. It gives you some sort of floatiness to you to your ship from third person, first person, etc. It's um just just not really really needed to be honest. And it it makes your game also feel a little bit stuttery. That's at least what I find. Um then show friendly name uh, contact nameplate and neutral hostile nameplates as well. Same as show contact distance. I like to have these because you know I want to actually see it. Mm. And then down here, emission HUD display signature values is also really nice. You see then the numbers, not only the lines of how much IR, EM, and cross section you have. Okay, so that was game settings. Next up, we go to graphics. So always play in your native resolution. If you don't, some people recommend this to leave all this on high and uh, go here lower resolution this doesn't give you that much performance because that picture still has to be rendered in your native resolution it just it just downscales it and makes it really blurry but it doesn't give you that much performance so go with your native resolution i would rather go with native resolution and then put some sort of um, upscaling technique and upscaling in there instead of lowering my resolution uh, i'm going for d3 d11 you can also try vulcan if you do try vulcan restart your game otherwise certain settings will not be affected and the result may be inaccurate personally i think d3 d11 is at the moment better than vulcan at least on my system this is all system dependent whatever hardware components you use but Vulkan doesn't run on its full potential right now. It's not using multi-core rendering. So D3, D11 it is for me. And then upscaling, I use quality and the upscaling technique DLSS because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't have one, go with TSR or FSR. Uh, look up a video. I will also link it down in the description. But how to find out which load runs better for you and your system, go for... A spot which has uh, lighting really nicely for example area 18 there's that arc global monument in the middle you can make a screenshot there with tsr and one with fsr with all the same settings just change these two and then compare the screenshots side by side after this we go over to quality quality itself is not for the texture details by itself it also has shadows anti-aliasing and all sorts of other things in it just cramped all into one little setting that we can change i go here with medium because high and very high draw more performance by not offering the same convenience here medium is totally fine um, this also correlates really good with field of view uh, i will show a little clip here right now that you can see what happens if you go low and then high field of view and what happens if you leave that high field of view and go for example on medium or high quality then next up is scattered object distance i put this on high same as terrain tessellation distance and screen space shadows the reason being is these three are the gpu cpu limiting factor if you put this to low you don't get really that much more frames because all that load goes from GPU to CPU. Put this to high, the frames stay the same, but the load goes to GPU. So that basically means you have on your CPU more wiggle room to improve your performance because usually in Star Citizen, a GPU is not the limited factor. Uh, water number of simulated regions. I have this on very low because I just want to see it if someone is in front of me while I'm low flying with a friend. Besides that, it doesn't really matter to me. 
I don't need to have it on high. If you have it on high, it just makes that effect last longer. So for example, I'm flying over water and it makes this water particle effect behind him through his thrusters. This effect is going to be longer. For example, 50 meters long and very low, it's only 10 or 15 meters long. If it does draw a lot of performance, even on very low for you, just turn it off. Plenty of volumetric clouds. I have this on medium. There is not a big difference between medium and high when you are in atmosphere. But the lower you go to the ground, especially on forest areas, etc., which draw a lot of performance in general, high seems to draw even more performance than medium. And if you just want to have a lot of visibility, because you have a lot of atmospheric fights and you don't like to have that little bit of stuttering while you are in atmosphere, you can just turn them off. It looks a little bit worse because there's no clouds anymore. It's just fog. It gives you more FPS, but also it gives you more visibility. So that's kind of, yeah. Field of view, I like 110 because 110 really go, works well with medium. So I can see my MFTs, they are not just not visible when I'm on uh, low and then high, higher field of view. 110 and medium works really good together uh, on most ships that I have. If I, I even think on all of the ships that I have, motion blur, I turn this off because I don't like this. It's some, some sort of screen tearing effect. And I don't know, it just doesn't look good, especially if you do bunker missions, etc. This can be really annoying. Uh, V-Sync, I have this off. You can turn this on if you still have screen tearing. V-Sync is there to remove screen tearing. So that's on you. I just don't like to use it. I want to have the most FPS I can get, even if it means I have a little bit of screen tearing, just a little bit. That's fine. It will hopefully not lo look like the screen tearing you get like with motion blur. Sharpening and chrom chromatic aberrations, totally useless. They just draw performance. They make no real difference in your picture. So I'll put them to zero. The only reason why I would ever maybe want to use sharpening is if you have a little bit of blurriness through TSR or FSR, then maybe play around with that sharpening. Keep in mind, sharpening does take performance. Film grain off and session QR code also off. Next one is audio. All the audio settings in the top is all personal preference for you. The only thing we really care are the last three. Comment music, no, because I don't have music on in general, but removing music here and the comment music gives you also a little bit more CPU performance. Reason being is, of course, it has to get that music from somewhere and then render it into the game. The same applies to audio driven camera shake. This really takes audio as well, um, uh, the CPU power as well. You can also play with dynamic ranges because this is going to take also CPU performance, but I just leave it on full range because I didn't notice any difference uh, on this. Then controls, mouse sensitivity. I highly recommend this is just a recommendation. I highly recommend. You have your DPI set on your desktop and you want to leave it like this. For example, me, I use three screens. And I want to get comfortably from all the way from my right screen all the way to my left screen comfortably. I don't want to move my mouse like one centimeter and I'm skipping all three screens. It should be like 10, 15 centimeter of movement uh, or in, I think in inches it would be like seven inches. Uh, five to seven inches movement of my mouse to move between all my screens. But then in game, I don't want to just move my mouse five centimeters and it moves like across all my screens. Like it would be way too fast, right? So I just then turn down my mouse sensitivity here. Um, but you need to decide how much you want to do this. And then comms, FOIP and head tracking, they changed all the order of all these settings here. First on the top, we choose our microphone so that our push to talk also works. And then we scroll all the way down and then just a little bit up until we reach the calibrate. And above this, you see faceware enable FOIP. If you knew or reinstalled your game or whatever, you get that pop-up in the beginning when you launch the game for the first time. 
and asks you if you want to enable it. They should really remove this because even I fat fingered it and said yes because I didn't know what it was. Now, after checking all the settings and getting knowledge about all this, I noticed that this is totally useless. I don't even have a face tracker or head tracker or whatever. So having this on yes draws a lot of CPU performance. That's just so that's why I'm just turning it off. And that's basically it for in the game. You don't need to save for anything. What I would just recommend is uh, quit the game and uh, then we see us on the Windows settings. All right, so now we are uh, here on Windows. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to right click in our desktop and go to NVIDIA control panel. I have it already open here. And the first setting immediately, we need to go to use the advanced 3D image settings because otherwise nothing of what we're going to change here is going to get applied. Click on take me there. And we have the global settings and the program settings here on the top. And we want to go change the globals first. So we scroll all the way down, we go a little bit up and we see OpenGL rendering GPU. We want to choose our GPU. Power management mode, you can leave it on normal and make it game specific to go on maximum performance. If you're someone like me who literally all the time is using anything that is game related or wants to have my GPU on full power, you can also just do it here. Which this does is it will let the GPU not go into idle where it clocks down to like 400 megahertz or 500 or 600. It will always stay at their maximum uh, clock speed. For example, for mine, it's 17. 177. Then preferred rush refresh rate is monitor specific. This setting can be here, but it can also not be here. If it's there, go for highest available. And then shader cache size, go for 10 gigs or unlimited. 10 gigs seems to be the sweet spot, and it's like a really good setting that works 99% of the time. Unlimited could yield a little bit better performance. So test this out. And then configure surround and physics. Choose your GPU here as well. Don't leave it on auto. You don't want to use a uh, CPU for that. So that's our control panel settings. And then after that, we have our device manager settings. And what we can do here is on the systems devices, the high precision event time. You can right click and disable this, restart your computer. If it doesn't do any performance impact, Restart the computer again, go into the BIOS and try to look up HPET, maybe read your user manual for your motherboard or Google it. But sometimes on some manufacturers, you need to disable this feature in the BIOS. It's not needed. So this is an optional tool. Just disable it, restart the computer, check if the performance, if it doesn't work, go into BIOS, disable in BIOS, then go back, check the game. This is going to impact not only Star Citizen, this is going to impact everything you do on your computer. Everything will run much smoother. At least this is from my experience. That's the device manager. And then another optional tool that we have here is MSI Afterburner. And here even you can turn the power draw of your GPU higher. That's what I mean with it always runs on full speed. It's 1777 right now. So there you go. I put also the download link of MSI Afterburner um, and the new NVIDIA app because it's going to replace GeForce Experience um, down in the description. I hope it's going to help you guys. Uh, and next video is going to be the keybinds for PvP uh, and PvE on foot and uh, in space. Uh, and I'm going to catch you all next time. Bye safe.